Some research shows that veganism can reverse a heart attack, but you will not catch me telling my patients to go vegan. In fact, I tell my students to have a high cholesterol diet to reverse a heart attack, but you must follow the rules or you could make things worse. So let's cover how you would reverse a heart attack. This story begins by understanding that that inner lining on the inside of all your blood vessels is called an endothelium. And this is where the core origin of heart attacks starts. Your endothelium actually has a sealant that runs through the arteries of your body, keeping the blood flow smoothly flowing and not letting extra particles sneak outside that blood vessel, causing disease in the artery wall. When I want to understand if a patient's endothelium is inflamed, I measure a blood test called a highly sensitive C-reactive protein. The higher that C-reactive protein is, the more diseased their sealant is, keeping the blood flow flowing and those bad particles out of their artery wall. The sealant on your endothelium doesn't go bad in a day or two. It takes time. And as the diseases that promote heart disease grow worse, we can see that process of a heart attack starting. In this progression of building a heart attack, the first several sections are actually this invisible process where the endothelium is damaged. Once that sealant is damaged, the particles that carry cholesterol around your bloodstream start to exit and find a home inside your arterial wall. When we attempt to reverse that disease process by lowering the C-reactive protein back to normal, we find that all kinds of inflammatory problems keep that C-reactive protein high. Things like autoimmune disorders or even food allergies will keep that C-reactive protein smoldering high, reflecting that chronic disease of the sealant inside your arteries. When patients arrive in my internal medicine clinic, most of them already have these diseases living in the arteries of their body. And to reverse it, we really need the cap over their pimple inside their arteries to thicken. A thin cap, much like a ripe pimple, will pop, whereas a thick cap has a season of much less inflammation where the body protects that eruption of cholesterol-like material into the blood flow. So how do we transition a thin-capped pimple to a thick-cap pimple? Well, that's where this paper on veganism does get some of the story right. This article talks about the progressive endothelial injury and inflammatory oxidative stress, decreased nitric oxide production at the local area of that artery, foam cells, which are the cells helping to make that pimple, and the diminished endothelial progenitor cell production. Again, all working towards cardiovascular disease and the steps needed to make a very ripe pimple causing the heart attack. Where the pimple grows, whether it's the arteries in your heart or your brain or any other artery in your body, will depend on where that pathology presents in the patient. The study premise said that these vegans from Okinawa, New Guinea, rural China, and even Central Africa had the far superior diet with much less heart disease. What they left out was, well, what about the Inuits from the Arctic? They eat high animal fats and they too had very low heart disease. Why? It wasn't processed either. So the similarities between those diets low in meat and high in meat start with they both ate whole foods and had very little process in the making of their foods. Second, they both have food scarcity. So when we talk about decreasing the volume of food to improve the outcomes of longevity, well, both of these populations did that naturally. So telling my patients to eat high fat foods or a diet high in cholesterol is not the only thing they need to follow. It is keeping those whole foods and the volume of food lower. This is something we go over explicitly in that keto continuum, starting with the basic rules and then keeping the rules reminded to the patient so that their insulin gets lower and the caps over the pimples throughout their arteries get thicker. I advocate that my patients at risk for a heart attack begin eating a high fat, high cholesterol diet. 
The key to this is we are lowering their insulin by also keeping their sugar low. If they eat that high fat diet while still eating the sugar, they actually make more pimples and more problems because the insulin never drops. It is the critical part that we teach in the continuum of how to take a ketogenic diet and continually improve their risk for heart disease by thickening the cap on their pimples throughout their body. As I teach my patients with lots of thin capped pimples how to get thicker caps, I'm really teaching the steps of autophagy. If you want to learn the five best steps of autophagy, check out this next video. I'll see you there.